everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Super Split Screen Brothers. I am Nick. Joining me is Jared. What's up, brother? How you doing? And uh, with a special guest today, we have Christoph, the vagrancy whore. What's up, brother? Good evening. Uh, yeah, no, I'm glad to be here, honestly. Um, admittedly, not exactly my forte, not my specific dominion, I guess you could say, but glad to be here and hopefully I can contribute. <laughs> I'm sure you can. I'm sure you'll be good. So uh, introduce yourself to people and uh, kind of tell them a little bit about yourself before we get into this. Uh, oh, me. All right. <laughs> um, well, as I said, my name is Christoph Chester. Um, I, I'm mostly in the realm of horror. Uh, I have a YouTube channel where I tell weird stories and eldritch stories. But uh, to be fair, video games, especially the Nintendo, uh, have always been a big thing with me. So I, I saw the opportunity and decided to come in with you guys here and talk about this because it, it's kind of weird. The more I thought about it, the this is actually kind of a big thing in my opinion that with the eShop and and stuff like that and mm-hmm. yeah and yeah. Ugh. And it is kind of funny because I think my mother still plays on her DS, actually. <laughs> uh, and it, it's funny because, you know, I saw you uh, tweet about this yesterday. And it was weird because at first I was like, I, I haven't touched an, a Wii U or a DS in, in years. But the more I thought about it, it was like, yeah, but those games, Nintendo in general really was actually a very big part of you know, yesteryear, so to speak. Hmm. But, yeah, it, it was kind of jaw-jacking, actually, to think about it. <laughs> mm-hmm. But um, as far as, like, what am I playing now? As I've gotten older, I've come to appreciate pick-up-and-play games more and more, like uh, Slay the Spire, More Time, uh, Mario Party, Mario Kart. We're not but, getting into the Nintendo uh, topic just right yet. Uh, so kind of hold those thoughts. I will, um, I will. So let's kind of start off with uh, just a little thing. Like, so what you guys been playing, players? Uh, Jared, what have you been playing? I've been playing mostly Knights of Old Republic. I completed Tatooine, moving on to Kashyyyk. Just really enjoying that and annoying the hell out of Basila. That that itself is a mini game in and of itself in that game. Mm-hmm. Just, the, just the reward that comes with seeing her get exasperated. It's so good. Uh Exasperating Basila and just telling off Karth. I, I, like, you can just be really freaking mean to Karth. It is. You can be a douche to Karth and he'll still follow you around. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> you, you. Thank you for continuing to fight alongside me, even though I've been nothing but an a hole to you the entire time. But uh, in terms of movies, I watched the entire. I watched like all of the Rocky movies yesterday, as a matter of fact. So that was fun. And. In terms of TV shows, I've been in slow. Uh, I've been enjoying The Mandalorian. It's been getting slowly better after mm-hmm. last week's. Uh, I mean, after two weeks ago's uh, travesty of an episode. But that's just me. Yeah. And on Saturday, I'm doing a rewatch of Justice League, the really crappy version. So, <laughs> pray for my soul. I pray for your sanity above all. Says the, but uh, says the guy that's got to watch Captain Marvel. Oh. Yes, uh, please, pl- please, please pray for my my sanity. Uh, it's going to be tested. <laughs> oh. So, uh, speaking of what I will be watching or have been watching or doing anyway, so I've been playing more. I've been continuing to play Spider Man Four. I'm PS4. I'm kind of towards the back third of the game. Uh, anyone who's played the game, I've done the raft mission. Uh, just keeping it that. Well, it's a freaking four. It's a what? You can four. spoil it. The game's old enough. So yeah, I'm in the stage where Devil's Breath has been unleashed, and uh, I just rounded up Shocker and Vulture. Uh, so that's kind of where I'm at. So I'm at towards the end of the game. It's been an amazing ride. Obviously, I still need have I still have DLCs to do, but it's just a really good, uh, really good thing. I completed all the Black Cat uh, things. That last one was kind of tricky. I actually had to look it up, but like, it's just really fun. Um, <laughs> first time I played it um, the combat was a little difficult to me but now 
that uh, I've gotten a little better at it. Like the combat, the combat in Spider Man, it's obviously very Arkham based, but I feel like it has more of an emphasis on crowd control than it does uh, like flowing from person to person. Because it's Spider Man, that's kind of his thing. Yeah, like you got to be very quick with like, okay, I use this web here, this type of web here. You know, you got to be like, oh, there's an opening there, I can get two of them together. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like, oh, if I if I if I do a web bomb here, they'll all be delayed, and I can have some more time to take care of these people. You know, mm-hmm. it's you've got it's. I like how you've got a very very quickly visually look at like, okay, this one has a sword, so I do the uppercut, and then either I do, do them there, slam them down, like, oh, you know, it's it's a very. I actually like it because the Batman one is more rhythm based. It's more you got to get into a rhythm, mm-hmm. you know, boom, 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 dodge. This one. It's more active with your mind because you got to be, be visually assessing things. You got to make like kind of quick decisions on the fly. It's yeah, it's a lot. It's it's really good. Of course. Yes, of course. Yeah, it, it, it's uh, and I, I agree with you, Nick. It's it's more fast paced than Arkham is what I think. But and, and again, that makes sense because in Spider Man, he's generally a faster and more like fluid combatant than Batman, but. Uh, I mean, and, and I do like how when you're playing the game and you're in combat, you have to think really fast about what web you're using. Yeah, and like some enemies require different approaches, like the shield people. Like honestly, the ones that that, that uh, do give me a bit of trouble are, are like the shield people, which is why my prayer is always disarming them of their shield. Like I love that perk where you, mm-hmm. you, you you use it like you take the shield from them or their weapon, and just like. No, you. Smack it at him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love that. And then uh, that's what I've been watching. I saw John Wick 4 over the weekend. It is freaking amazing. And then just like, yeah, I've been watching The Mandalorian. Nice. <laughs> uh, Jared yeah, I, is I our downloaded resident. your clips. I downloaded your clips. Well, it's not like I it's not like I didn't send them to you or anything. It's not like you didn't send me a folder that had like 80 of them. <laughs> that you sent me my... just as much clips as I have on my show, and my show is just on the Snyder Cut. I mean, you ha- literally have the entirety of Zack Snyder's Justice League uploaded to your stream yard. I regret nothing! Oh, you're putting these to good use. <laughs> exactly. So I need to catch up. My, my reaction folder is just like 40-something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You guys have 80? Oh, you, yeah, we kind of go overboard with our reaction drops. So, Vagrancy, what have you been playing? Uh, well, like I said, uh, as I got older, I, I kind of play the more uh, pick-up-and-go games, like Slay the Spire, Mario Kart, and Party. I have been playing the open beta for uh, Diablo 4. Mm, how's that? And... It, it, it has me having mixed feelings because it is a lot like three and I liked three. I missed out on one and two, sadly. I keep saying I'm going to try and find a way to play them, but it's one of those things that just doesn't happen. But Well, Diablo 2 yeah. recently got a remastered port that's really good. That is that is a good point. Was that What was that for? That was for... Uh, pretty much everything. It is, and it is on the Switch, which is what I have it for. Um, oh. you obviously, you can get it for PC, and then pretty much all the either major consoles. Um, the Switch hmm. port's really good. Uh, Diablo three got a Switch port, which uh, I played that for a little while. It's pretty good. Uh, Diablo one, uh, you can still buy on PC. You can actually get Diablo one on GOG, by the way. Hmm. So, but but um, it is very clearly a an open beta because. The second you're in any location that has other players online, it it becomes like The Sims. <laughs> there's like there's so much <laughs> lag. There's no moving animations or anything. It, yeah. It's actually really funny, and it keeps crashing. Uh, Specifically, it crashes every time I try to uh, uh, use a waystone back to the big major city. It it's kind hmm. of funny actually, but it's very much an open beta right now. I know Blizzard is kind of a touchy subject for some people, but I I personally, man, I want to just play a game. I, I don't even, politics bore me so painfully, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. 
and I just try to avoid it and not even get involved with that. Honestly, as, as far as a Blizzard, see, I used to be a huge Blizzard fan. Like, uh, I love, I loved Diablo. Um, in fact, if you kind of look at look around uh, here, I know there's a like because uh, like all these game banners, there's definitely a World of Warcraft banner here somewhere. I, I can't remember. I think it's more up top, but like, yeah, uh, I you know World of Warcraft, Diablo. It's just Blizzard has gone down hill so much ever since the Activision buyout, which would that was like 13 years ago. Jesus. Oh. Um, yeah, because I think they merged in like 2007, 2008 with an action in Blizzard form. I could be wrong about that detail. But like, you know, and they've been kind of going in, in a direction that I don't like. And just like, plus, I, I really don't like it when you have companies that like preach certain politics and then you find out they've been doing some degenerate crap. It's just like, come on. Yeah. Um, it's like they made such a big deal about Overwatch with all that stuff, um, and then they and then they're doing like the, the like the the Cosby Suite kind of crap. I'm I'm being I'm, I'm I mean I mean to be fair, you kind of thing is sad I, thing is is that kind of, is exactly what I thought of. <laughs> I was wait I was waiting for the right opportunity. Yeah. Uh, under my advisement of my legal counsel, aka Jared, I am skimming the surface of the controversy. Oh, we could. We, I'm sure we could talk quite extensively about those things. Oh, but we could. It's your show. It's just so. If you want, it's your show, Nick. No, but I value your 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 counsel, and uh, I I, mm -hmm. I don't want to get into that. We're, plus, honestly, it's too big of a topic. We can make it a, a topic for another time, but um, for now. Uh, we have a uh, bigger fish to fry, and and by fish I mean the Wii U and the 3DS. Uh, so yeah, we're in the news area for that. Yeah. Right. No, this is the main topic. This is like oh, the main okay, entree. Yeah. So so, so I, I just l l l let me mo modify this, but go go ahead. And yeah, go uh, eShop closure. So, uh, so but at at the time of this recording, it is the you know the twenty seventh of March, which is. The dawn of the final day of the eShop. But, you know, by the time this goes live on Wednesday, it'll be gone. You know, pretty much. It'll be gone. But as of this time, it's still recording. So, so basically, the Nintendo, the basically, the, the online stores for the Wii U and the eShop are closing down today at 8, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, so, if, so if you guys are, have anything less you want to buy, you can do that. And this is kind of a big deal for a lot of people, um, which I understand. Um, uh, but, but there's also kind of there's been talks of like game preservation and whatnot. Personally, I'm all for game preservation. I just feel like the current approach to game preservation, the way that people talk about it, is fundamentally flawed and it is it's kind of it's not going to really catch hold with the way that we approach game preservation so so yeah what are your guys' thoughts upon this i mean jared um you you don't really have a pony in this race but what's your kind of like outsider perspective well so the whole eShop is closing the whole, the, in other words, the way you buy games uh, online for for, for for the DS is for the you can no longer buy games. I think you can still re-download them, uh, and then you can get updates. I think, uh, but that's about it. Well, the 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 few articles I was reading on it were actually saying that no, it's it's all stopping. It's brick wall today. I mean, online. Uh, I know some online services are going to be still be available. Like, for example, the PokeBank is actually going free to play uh, as of tonight because you had to pay like five dollars a year to do it. And uh, after this, it's free as long as you have the app. Because I've had Pokemon on my Moon Save for like years that I've been waiting to transfer, uh, and I'm actually going to be doing that tonight. You know, put, put them in Might my well. Pokemon Home. Sorry, you're saying. Here. Well, yeah, and uh, so, from my perspective, because I, I, I have experience with with gaming eShops, because again, as an Xbox gamer, I get most mm -hmm. of my games, as a matter of fact, on Xbox Live and like and, and Game Pass and such. So I, I am 
somewhat familiar with that. And I think it's, it could be, indi it's indicative of a lot of things. A lot of things in media nowadays are like getting either shortened or shut down because of like the money's drying up because uh, all of a sudden it's like, but, but it, we're not in the pandemic era where like everyone need, where like everyone's home all the time. So they can afford to like go. Okay, so I, so do, um I, I, I'm gonna be home all day. I can buy, I can like purchase a game online, just play for a couple hours. Now that we're kind of transitioning back to regular time, of course, all this like digital only stuff is going to experience a dip. I'm not I, quite sure uh, the pandemic is the reason for this, uh, because like naturally store closures are are a thing. Like the Wii the Wii e shop, I think ended in 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, they closed that one a while back, and in my opinion, is this kind of stuff is inevitable, um, and I. And I do feel like we're going to start to see more of a push back toward physical mm -hmm. because not just with the closures of like these e-shops, but also the streaming stuff, like all the streaming fragmentation and um, everything. I, I do think we're going to start to see more of a more of a push back to physical. Like I think I really feel like in the next few years, Blu-ray sales are going to pick up. Uh, Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Uh, vagrancy. What are your thoughts on all this? So, I'm I'm kind of the outsider in all this because a lot of the games I play are are just older things, and especially uh, with certain projects that I'm actually working on, um, I've been accumulating tabletop games, mm. especially older media and stuff. And it's it's funny because I look at this landscape of games and the post pandemic and streaming wars and all these things. And I think all of this is tied into the big conglomerate of entertainment and the big problem and the reason we're seeing people who are just being sideways by this e-shop closure and, you know, uh, um, Jared, excuse me, was kind of alluding to it with, you know, projects and movies and games and things that are suddenly being put on hold and pushed back is because as a people, we've really fallen for two very bad deceptions. And when I say that, I'm I'm not standing on top of the mountain here. I'm with everyone else. We fell into a pitfall where we believed the old saying, uh, keeping up with the Joneses. Mm -hmm. We needed oh. all the new things. We needed all the new software. We needed all the new apps and streams and all these things. And the problem is, is we've been making so many progressions from console to console to streaming service, to streaming service, to movie, to movie, to movie, that the archives are being pushed farther and farther back. And like you were saying, you know, you can't just have these e-shops up forever. I mean, they're taking up space. And yeah, like that's, that's an argument that I've heard from some game preservationists. Like, like uh, they, 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 they act like the closure is some tragedy when it, when all it is is an inevitable conclusion. Well, and, and, like, and here's they... the thing too. Uh, I, 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 you know, I'm sorry, Nick. I, I mean to interrupt you. Yeah, I, I'm almost done with it. But like, yeah. they act like it's some some tragedy, and like they say, oh, Nintendo should just keep it up forever. Um, okay. You know, we'll, we'll touch can. more upon this when we get to the game preservation angle. But like, uh, the the problem I see is like a lot of these game preservationists they they act, they act like these companies should be charities when. When, they, when that's not how it works or it's yeah, like then... from my perspective i'm the comics and uh, and movie guy of our group and mm -hmm. a lot of the and th th this is similar to like the argument with like digital comics and comicsology because you think this is why you buy physical because if the shop closes down like if all of a sudden dc stopped publishing comics let's say for some in some alternate world in the multiverse i still have that shelf it's not like those go away it's it's not like I can't go to a store and still buy DC. If the online store sh um, shuts down, yeah, I can't buy stuff. Or I lose my access to it. Because really what you're doing w w on digital anything is you're just borrowing access to it. It's the same thing as going to a library and saying, hey, I want to rent this. Except you're, 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 you're renting it forever, air quotes. That's why you want to buy physical. Because yes, storage space as more and more games come up and they want to put more and more games in their little e-shop 
they have to clear up space because it's only in because uh, it's only a certain amount of space on the servers. So, if you really wanted to keep playing those games, you should have gotten them on f physical. I'm sorry, that's just the way it works. Get yeah. it in your hands. Yeah, get it only, in your only, hands. The only oh. digital service to where you're guaranteed to keep keep your games if it shuts down is GOG because they offer their games. DRM free, and they give you a DRM free installer that, and you can back them up yourself without any have to worry about it. That is the only service that you are 100 guaranteed to keep your stuff. Like I buy stuff on Steam because it's a stable platform; it's probably going to be around forever. Yeah, um, but I don't buy off of Epic. I'll I'll take their free games, but like Epic is a service that that uh, like look at Stadia. You know, Stadia was a game where, where you buy sixty dollar games for streaming. Um, and then they shut it down through his, I mean, thankfully they refunded people, but like they, they didn't have to, and they could have not done that and been fully within their right to do so. Here's the thing. I've, I've had games from like game pass even where it's like, th they'll take them off game pass and I'll go to play them and they won't work because again, I don't own them. I just own the temporary access as long as it's on the service where if I had them as a disc that. Xbox can't show up at my house and take my my uh, my game collection away from me. Bill, Ga hope. Bill Gates. Yeah, Bill Gates. I hope. I hope. Bill As of yet, they haven't been able to do that. So so Bill Gates shows up. He's wearing his getup from the 1995 Doom Preserve presentation. He's got the trench coat and the shotgun. He's like, "Give me your copy of Halo 3." And I'm like, "Try it, <laughs> try it, bro." But but that's the thing. It's like a lot of these people don't realize. Okay, so. Here's the thing with these older games, I would advise 100%. Again, I, and I keep emphasizing this get physical because here's as particularly Let's as the years go by. Yes, physical. exactly. As the years go by, get physical because what's inevitably going to happen is that those games are going to be taken off and the stores are going to be shut down because, again, even if these, even if these companies were a charity, let's say they are, they can't afford space wise to keep all these games on there, e ignoring money, because as more games come out and they want to be able to put them on the uh, on their service, for one thing, games nowadays take up significantly more space than than, than they did last time. I mean, it, t it took me like 50 gigs to install Call of Duty, but... It's like oh, as they as they take much? up more space as they take up more space it, and that's it, on the low end. It's like, that's on the low it's end, dude. Halo Modern Guardians was like seventy the, gigs. I mean, the the um, open beta, the yeah. open beta for Diablo Four was like twenty six gigs or something. Twenty six point eight gigs, I think, off the top of my head. That's just the beta. Yeah, that's, that's the just thing. The, it, it, what they don't realize. That, okay, if you want more, it, okay, if you want these things to be able to stay the way you want them to, the, then they can no longer release new games and put them on the eShop because that's this is the pro. Even if you, even if let's say it didn't cost anything to put put these games on there, if monetarily they could keep them on there, space wise, I'm sorry, it doesn't work like that. It's not, and it's not just a matter of space, but also bandwidth. Yeah, you that's know, true. More, um, and then there's also like the, the physical argument. Is a physical solution is a good one, but the, even that has its issues because modern games nowadays, uh, they're more installers than they are like the actual game. Don't even get me started. And that, that's on how that. you're getting talking about updates. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like let's say you have a game that's like broken, then got fixed patches. Um, unless you get like the game of the year edition, you know, uh, you're kind of screwed. Yeah. That's uh, uh, it, it was the biggest mind F when I went to when I transitioned from 360 to 1, because in 360, you just put the game in and you're good to go. One, you have to install it, so I'm like, wait a second. This isn't a PC. This is a console. What are you talking about? Installing the game. <laughs> what are you talking about here? Uh, and back to what I was, back to the point I was saying about technology moving so fast, most people don't realize a lot of modern TVs can't be plugged into something like a, a Super NES or an True. N64. And because this is actually relevant, um, so I, like I said, I love tabletop games <sighs> and it's way over across the table, but I can't, so I can't reach it. I actually found Atmosphere, the Harbingers from 1996 mm -hmm. in a freaking thrift store. Mm -hmm. and, and I got it because, one, I love the Atmosphere franchise. I mean, my name's the Vagrancy Horror. Okay, it's kind of important to me. But um, 
And my friends were all like, oh, we got to play this thing. This, uh, this game sounds insane. This sounds amazing. You need a VCR because it has a VHS component. Oh, geez. So I looked online for VCR. That's some Captain and, Power shit right there. <laughs> and, and TV VCR combos. And there is this untalked about resurgence. People are making brand new VCRs and TV VCR combos. And they're selling them for hundreds of dollars. Because people are waking up to the fact that the Joneses don't exist. You don't mm -hmm. need the newest technology necessarily. In fact, sometimes the newer technology sucks. It's not compatible with older stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so there's this whole new market coming up of trying to resell our own past, our own histories. Because if you want to play an NES game, well, guess what? I mean, you hell, uh, there's a whole freaking cottage industry. Like, um... Let me uh, let me just uh, stop my camera real quick and then grab something. Yeah, there's a whole <laughs> freaking cottage industry of like people modding consoles and just like like RGB, you know, whatever and whatnot. Um, and I really wish Caster was here, um, but um, but yeah, like let me just uh, sorry, I had to grab uh, go go and grab the just kind of demonstrate. Like, uh, for example, okay, so this obviously is a Game Gear, mm -hmm. but, um, it will be mine. Oh, yes, it will be mine. Wait, you want a modern Game Gear? No, no, no. I see, it's happens that, that this whole time you talk about v VCR combos, I was waiting for a pause in the conversation so I could put that in. <laughs> so... Uh, this thing has been modded, like uh, like as you can see, it has rechargeable batteries in it and whatnot. But that is not the best part. Uh, right? Just making sure this. All right, that's good enough. Okay. Nice. Look how bright that screen is. <laughs> oh yeah. Cow. But that. that... And that's the thing, Nick, is like even like old games going to newer hardware, it's like as an Xbox gamer, I still have to keep around my Xbox 360 because not all games work. Nice. Dang. The speaker's actually really nice. Wait, is that, what game is that? Oh, um, Vampire Master of Darkness, which uh, is one of the games that uh, Cass has sent me. I actually really like this game. It's basically Castlevania. It sounds very familiar. I don't know if I ever played that. One. I don't. I never had a Game Gear, so I probably. Never I think did, it but... is on the 3DS actually. Um, let's hmm. see here. Uh, I also have Shinobi. Uh, it's, I'm sorry. There's like a sea of blankets under me, so it's like I think <laughs> I got lost on that. But yeah, it's like there's people modding modding uh, game consoles like uh, I got a uh, RGB modded Genesis like the little right over there and I got like a and there's people making new hardware for it like there's an HDMI to Genesis cable so like I literally have my Genesis hooked up to my HD TV you mm -hmm. know um cuz the problem with um uh older consoles on HD TVs is not necessarily that they can't hook but like to be fair a lot of modern TVs can't display in the 240p of, of the stuff, but even if they can, and even if they do have like the the uh, uh, not the component, hookup. but the hookup, the the re the red, yellow, the and actual white plug-in components, yeah, Composite hookups, which you can yes. buy as an adapter too. That's the thing. Yeah, even if you do buy an adapter, they look like absolute ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, they, because they... because no shit. <laughs> That was that was nice. That was nice. I had to, and um, it looked like absolute ass because like uh, we, we, the, these these uh, games were designed with a CRT in mind. Because the, the CRT, it's actually the blurriness uh, was actually helpful because it, it kind of like blended the colors better. Like it created proper dithering. Like uh, like if you if you look at like a CRT comparison to like um. Like a normal comparison, you can actually see what it you can see what it you can see what it means. It, it's it's like that's why with like the old those emulators, you often see like a CRT filter. You see like options for scan lines and whatnot. You know, 
That's crazy. Like that's why I I still have a Sony Trinitan in my in my, uh, my storage area. Like I haven't touched it in years, but it's like it's a Sony Trinitan CRT, and it's like you don't really make them anymore, and they're just getting more valuable. So might as well hold on to it. I have a, a Sega Genesis somewhere on this. Sh- it's out of screen, but I have a Sega Genesis and an N64 somewhere in this mess. Sega Bros. And, and it's funny because like I've heard people online make this whole argument about, well, why would you have it? You can't even use it. Like, you know, why did you get atmosphere? You can't play it without a VCR and a television. It's like, because it's a piece of history. It, it yeah. is a treasure in itself just to have it. You know, and I mean, there are people who literally build P, you know, PCs to like late '90s specs because it's it's often tough to get like a lot of those like games to, like the late '90s, early 2000s to run on modern cons- uh, computers. It's easier just to have a retro computer. Mm-hmm. I mean, hell, I'm still trying to put together because there were pieces from the Atmosphere board game that were missing. So now I'm trying to track down replacement parts. You know, mm-hmm. there's like, you know pieces missing and oh boy the funny thing is the replacements cost more than the game did. Yeah, yeah. that's always if, like oh my gosh what have, have you ever thought about investing in like a 3d printer or something we have one it, it's pretty low we have a 3d printer why the hell i need to talk to my roommates later thank you <laughs> Thank you for reminding me of that, actually. Yeah, I was about to say, if you have one of those, you just print the parts. Why the hell did I not think of that? <laughs> it's a lot cheaper. There you go. Yeah, because, like, uh, I say 3D printing is really going to be a really interesting kind of thing for, like... Because, like, I watched, I watched videos um, of, like, you know, older computer stuff where, like, the, this guy is like, oh, it's a, a hinge for... Uh, for uh 1993 power book and it's like oh I'll, I'll just 3d print it and it's like holy crap we live in a modern age there are people that make straight up action figures and toy mods just in 3d printing so speaking of modification that's the uh the other end of this where <sighs> so i personally i'm not as affected by the e-shop closure as some of the people because i modded my 3ds like months ago and i like i pretty much got everything i wanted you know uh he's a pirate uh, oh yeah oh yeah you sailed the high seas yes uh for, for obvious reasons no we don't endorse piracy we're, we're totally not telling you to go commit crimes people watching this oh video. i don't endorse anything nick does i endorse piracy I'm telling you to commit crimes. What? <laughs> now do that again. Do it again. What? <laughs> I'm sorry. You guys set me up for that bit so well. <laughs> as soon as you said I endorse piracy, I'm like, well, I know what clip I'm using next. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Uh, well, well, wait, wait, wait. Well, I might as well use this one, too. <laughs> oh, my. I, I'm sorry. I just don't. I'm I just don't mess. so many people just tip or, tiptoe around it, where it's like they talk about piracy, like no, 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 don't do it. I'm like no, um, like it. Yes, it's illegal, you know. So do it at your own risk. But for love of God, you know, it's like it's there. Um, I just be like these people are acting like why would you spend thousands of dollars on games that you're probably never gonna play. Just, just download them and have fun. You know, it's like... Next thing we know, we're going to start hearing a knock on next door, and then all of a sudden we're going to hear this. Oh, change my state of mind. Ladies and gentlemen. Love's so hard to find. We got him. That's what we're gonna see. That there's gonna be a knock on his door. He's gonna go, "What the hell is that?" He gets up, and all of a sudden, SWAT team breaches in there. We got him. We got him. I just saw that, Nick. That doesn't help. Please clap. <laughs> but I, you I gave did, me such I... great clips. Thank you. I did. I I, I did uh, roll in that one on my performance check just now. So <laughs> that wouldn't be the first time. Hey, 
Miami Heat were here, that would be a that's what she said moment. No, Jared, you get the joke I just made, you know, given the episode we just watched? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of Just Sleep. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm waiting for my door to start knocking. <laughs> From this conversation, I, I, I had a conversation with someone on stream talking about if it's cheating, if you if it's a clone. What? On another stream, all right, this was me and Taladia and like a couple of other guys. We, I, I was on someone else's stream and someone brought up, would you either clone your dog or your, or your wife? Someone said your wife, but then they had really weird reasons for it and were like, no, 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 do not. The clone gets jealous and kills you or the clone falls in love with your wife and then leaves you for the wife or <laughs> and then I ask is it cheating if it's a clone because technically it's the same person you see by that logic if your wife is an identical twin which is by the way is nature's clones then it wouldn't be cheating to sleep with the sister which I think any 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 person would be like yes that is cheating of course <laughs> Thank you, Nick. You set me up so well for that. There are so many, <laughs> many horrible things. You don't yeah. understand. You don't understand. See, we, we have a running joke in my household about I have a dead girlfriend. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and this whole topic is just like internal screaming. And this. ironically, ironically, I dropped a comment on the stream saying, Begun the Clone War has. <laughs> and then Nick, Nick is over here in the background going No comment But that's just me That's just me But all in all the, I think the purpose of this episode If I could sum it up in one, in one sentence Buy physical media Please do Seriously by physical media. That's that's the best way to avoid this. By physical. I still have like discs and discs of Xbox that I that that I know are either ridiculously expensive or I can't play or get anymore. Yeah. So um, I think that's a good uh, note to kind of cap this episode off of. So uh, vagrancy. One more topic we're... though. There's one more topic though. Top five. Now, what's your top five retro games that you have? Physically, that we own physically. That these physically. Mine. Like... <sighs> Halo, ahead. as in Halo CE. I have the I have the Game of the Year Halo CE disc. Halo Two, again, Game of the Year disc. Gears of War One. Call of Call of Duty World at War. And okay, here's one I have physically. Justice League Heroes, the game that all right, it's backwards compatible for my 360, but it's like not as good backwards compatibility. Oftentimes the game will cut into slow motion, um, even though there's no slow motion ca capacity in the game. But it still it still plays enough that I'm like, okay, you know what? That's fine. I'll play the game. Oh, and look, look at the side to show up at the end of the episode. Oh, <laughs> hello. What's up? Hey, Jaheet. You're, hey. you're late. We're just wrapping up. But all right, Jaheet. Top five games that you own physically. Top five retro games. Let's see. KOTOR. That's one. Battlestar Galactica. Uh, Sonic. One of the, an old Sonic game. One of the older ones from the early to mid 2000s. Not Sonic 06, though. That, got, that game was trash. It was. Um, let's see. I remember the old days playing Shadow the Hedgehog. That game was badass. A little so edgy, edgy, but definitely badass. So edgy. It's it's Shadow. What do you expect? Yeah, but there's so much. There's such a thing as too much edgy. Too edgy. No, there's not. Don't yes, say that too is, loud. Jared. You'll make Games Workshop cry. <laughs> 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 nice. Uh. No. <laughs> oh, you gotta send me that clip. I will. I will. You need that for your show too. Oh. oh. But go on, Nick. What are your top five retro games that you own 
physically because that's the way to do it. Okay. N name them. I can't see f from this distance. All right. So first off top of the list is uh, Golden Sun, my favorite game of all time. And next we have Fantasy Life for oh, oh we lost somebody oh all right here back. Fantasy Life for the 3DS I love nice so happy it's getting a sequel on the Switch I'm really freaking excited and then we got Final Fantasy IV the complete collection in my opinion the definitive version of Final Fantasy IV I will I don't think I'll ever part with this it's just such a great definitive version. The Final Fantasy franchise right now is a mess. Ooh. Next up, we got uh, an amazing racing game. Need for yes. my, Underground. That's my number yes. four. That's my yes. number four. Do, 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 do. No, do, do. Nick, Nick, no, so Nick that, I, I have... I went, I, once I was in the hospital once, and, and, and they, my dad came in. It was rolling one of those game cubes they have on the hospital. That was on there. It's so good. It's and so then, much uh, fun. And then lastly is the best Fallout ever. No shit. <laughs> Fallout New Vegas. This is the ultimate edition. So mm -hmm. got all the DLC on it. And yes, uh, I'm a huge New Vegas fan. Of course. <laughs> yeah, I'm still trying to think where... where all... Half, you know, we're talking about lists of uh, our games. Half of mine are t are tabletop games. That's fine. That's fine. Go ahead. Yeah, those work. Still counts. So, right. Jay, uh, Jay, he, Jay he, what are your top five? I okay. I'll go over them again. Oh, uh, uh, Kotor, Night the Old Republic, Revan. Number two, Need for Speed Underground. Three, mm -hmm. Battlestar Galactica. Four, Crash Bandicoot. In five, Shadow 05. Is it? I, I love. It's a good game. It's a good game. Shadow. All right. Qu question: There was a Battlestar Galactica game. Yeah, it wasn't on console. It was an arcade game. Oh, no wonder. Yeah, but I don't think Battlestar Galactica was ever on console. I don't think I so. Think was it like a one. like a space there's... combat game? Yeah. Yeah, I think that there was a space combat game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but no Battlestar Galactica. There was never a Battlestar Galactica on console. Completely separate mm -hmm. generation. There might have been. I'm not sure. It was probably just some like tie-in game. But ESG never really got a proper game. Because remember, uh, uh, Battlestar Galactica the reboot was popular in like the the mid to late 2000s. Basically, the uh, F 360 generation. That was the era of like bad movie tie-ins. Like that was. Like, oh you know, God, I think Iron Man once was the only one that was good. Well, to be fair, they, they kind of stopped doing the bad movie tie-in towards the end of that generation. You know, we still get movie tie-ins, but they're more just, they put more, like, they, they actually kind of put more time into them now. Uh, but, yeah, like, the, like because, uh, like, remember, Phase 1 actually got, like, a lot of really Ow. bad movie tie-ins, like Iron Man, Thor, Hulk, uh, oh. Captain America got a game. So, so Yeah. But games like Arkham Asylum really show that, like, hey, if you actually put time and effort into these games, people like them. Holy it's, crap. Instead of an easy cash grab. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, so all I right, have right. most of my ensemble here. Um, so I actually was able to dig out an original nice. Pokemon. Nice. Nice. Yes. Oh. Yeah. yeah. All um, the clip. What? The nerd one. Do you know how old that game is? No, 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 oh, please. Oh, no. Oh, no. good sir. I, I am about to blow your goddamn minds. Um, I couldn't find the box because it's buried in my closet somewhere. Anyone here old enough to remember a game called Key to the Kingdom? Yes. I have it. Oh! <laughs> oh! Yes, I have the original key to the kingdom. Uh, we also have this oh, one. Haven't you? Founder of thrift store. Hey, yeah, yeah, nice. Burger. And then nice. Baby said, hmm? "Dance, magic, um, dance." And of course, this big for him. The one with holy him. crap! Yeah, yeah the nice. harbingers. Nice, nice. Thrift store. Whoa. 
thrift stores. Seriously. People always go like, you know, so you're going to the game store or games workshop to get some stuff for the tabletop? No, I'm going to ARC. <laughs> See, the thing is, um, I remember when thrift stores were good and you can get like lots of really good stuff for cheap. Like uh, thrift stores, even 10 years ago, you could find so much more stuff because now nowadays everyone's and even the thrift stores themselves are aware of what they have, you know. Yeah, that's and, true. And so that's why I don't really go to thrift stores much because it's a lot harder to find good stuff. So but here's I the thing: like, if you go to Ollie's, you can get like Omnibuy for like thirty bucks, and an Omnibus costs like max one fifty, but maybe uh, one seventy five, depending where you are. So yeah. I used to be a big like thrift store or garage sale person, like from about twenty twelve to one about twenty fifteen ish. Yeah. And mm -hmm. like I would regularly find like games that are like 70, 80, 100 dollars, you know, and whatnot. Probably my best garage, my best thrift store find was I was about to leave my local Salvation Army and I found a box copy of Animal Crossing for the GameCube. Okay. Oh and I have so many memories. No, no, no. So I was like, eh, I'll check the disc. And I opened the game and Super Smash Brothers Melee fell out of the case. And Animal Crossing was still in there. What? Wow. Oh, no, no, no. It, but wait, there's more. So um, so what I did is I quietly just closed up the box, bought the game for $3. Okay. And no. by the way, what I purchased was a complete copy of Animal Crossing. On, um, complete copy of Animal Crossing with melee loose. Uh, I need to uh, turn on my cam just because, like, and then uh, so I did courage. that. Hi, courage. Oh, oh. <laughs> just jumped out. That was yeah. awesome. So, and then I went to my local game store and I sold uh, Animal Crossing for five dollars and I kept the melee disc. So, I got <laughs> Super Smash Brothers Melee for positive three dollars, basically. Whoa. So I found that, that was probably my best thrift store find ever, and now he's you know, mm -hmm. like that that those kind of deals you won't find anymore. Like that was the most insane deal. And there's like other ones. I I I've gotten like box. P I used to get like box PC. And there's so much stuff I got. Um, it was crazy. Um, but you don't really find that stuff anymore. Um, like yeah, it's still there, but it's a lot harder to find. You got to dig through a lot of junk. Like. It used to be like every visit, I'd find at least one or two things that were cool. Now it's like every three or four visits, I might find something interesting. Yeah, oh, you're daily. Well, you, you still gotta do it. You still gotta do it. <laughs> hey, guy. Adorable little creature. But uh, speaking yes. of finding artifacts, you had to dig through the trash floor. Ooh, nice. Oh. Those wrestling games on the 64 were really good. They they were, they they were. Um, but yeah, no, I, I have these two, I have a bunch of other stuff like my Sega Genesis games, I believe are actually, uh, still with my sister in Texas, but I had like Dick Tracy, mm. Primal Rage, um, <laughs> anyone remember Mickey Mouse's Castle of Illusions? Yes. <laughs> they remade it, I think, a couple years ago. Remember but, yeah. Big Kid NES? Vaguely, I was a Sega Genesis household. My neighbor had the the Nintendo and the Super Nintendo, so I'm kind of late to the party on that one. <laughs> You're like the tail so, end of that generation. So growing up, um, in my younger years, we had an NES in my house, and then my at my grandma's house there was an Atari 2600. Um, and then uh, around in 95, 96, I got a Play It Loud Red Game Boy. That was like my first game console that was like mine. And then around 97, we got a PlayStation. And then that that's basically like in the PlayStation, it's like my console. That's like my main, like, like that's the one I love. What was that for? Like, why Xbox you that? Dominance for life! <laughs> the Xbox didn't exist then. Now it does! <laughs> Begun. Right, the console wars have. Technically, oh, the Xbox came one, came out in 01. Technically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we're talking PlayStation 1 here. Also, Vagrancy, 
since you brought your Sega, I I have to go uh, grab mine. Yeah, see. <laughs> I got Lion King in it. <laughs> oh my. Too easy. Way too easy. <laughs> you you actually played a Lion King game? It's actually really good. Do, do you know what I played once in the PC? Is this really old Toy Story game where all you were playing, uh, where all you were was Buzz Lightyear running around Andy's house? You know what's really crazy? Those Toy Story games were actually like really good. Like the ones for like the the Sega Genesis uh, mm-hmm. was was really good. Even like Toy Story Two. Like Toy Story two for like the P- PS one and sixty four is really good, and actually Toy Story three for the three sixty is actually looked upon very fondly. Like it, it's really crazy how good of a batting average those Toy Story games have. It's it's really freaking crazy. Mm-hmm. It is. It is. Too bad uh, they never made. And a you game wouldn't for Toy expect for a Toy Story game to actually be good. That's the that's the weird part. Yeah, like fun fact. Uh, so the uh, they had like a playground kind of mode for Toy Story three that oh, actually helped that. inspire Disney Infinity. Mm-hmm. Oh, that sounds so familiar. Yeah, I don't think I, I yeah, don't know. The, the, the playbox play mode helped inspire Disney Infinity. Mm-hmm. Wow, and now I feel horribly old. <laughs> we all do. Vagrant. Speak for yourself. Do. I'm 27. Uh... He's, he's uh, the spring chicken of the group. Okay. I'm actually 25, so. Oh, so he's now the youngins in the group, huh? Uh, oh my god! I just, don't worry, Nick, Nick remembers the dinosaurs. Don't worry, it's all good. I am literally <laughs> 10 years older than Jay Heat. No, I, no. I what's I, funny I, is that um, you know what's kind of funny. Nick got the idea for time travel in his uh, samurai book because back in the day in the dinosaur age, he used to wish and try to invent it so he could get back to a time when they actually had entertaining stuff. I get, oh. I get it's a back to the future joke, but too wordy. Get to the punchline. I know, geez. Courage is oh. not happy. He, he is not. Happy. I'm not happy. I'm not happy because I'm like about the same age. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm not you know, ready Jared, to from the Cretaceous period. Jared, if you're not careful, I'm going to take you back to the past. I regret nothing! I was kind of in the middle of a bit there. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. I'm going to, hey, Jared, if you're not careful, I'm going to take you back to the past and make you play the shitty game to suck ass. Which one? Yeah, which one? That, yeah. That, that's the thing there. Uh, maybe Sherlock Holmes, maybe uh, Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle. Okay, that one was that bad. Please tell me you guys are getting the, the reference I'm making. Please, oh, we're getting it. Uh, yeah. We're getting it. We're getting I it. Am. He's gonna take you back to the past. Mm-hmm. If you He'd took me to, to the Everyone past the and made me... Uh, you know what I've always wanted to do is go back in the past and play the old Superman uh, Nintendo 64 game. That Jeez. way, when people ask... That can be arranged. Well, that, that way, when people ask me, hey, what's Jared doing? He's doing this Superman thing. You do realize, Jared, that, like, now now if I ever come visit you, I have to specifically bring an NC4 and a copy of Superman 64 just, just to literally we can do a live stream of you. No shit. Of you playing Superman 64 for the first time on stream. <laughs> that would be great. Seeing my very like exasperated face going, turn you son of a <laughs> It's like, why is Superman flying the rings? The rings. The rings. And then when I'm watching, uh, and then literally when I'm, uh, 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 if I ever get to interview a developer of the game, I will go. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Well, hold on. Uh, I think you need a Ouija board and like some kind of dark occultist to actually speak to the people who made that game. No, I know, I know. 
or like I mean, anyone that, that tries to tell me that's a good game. I don't think anyone would. Tr- I don't think, like. Here's the thing. Oh, they exist. Wait, really? There are Superman sixty four defenders. Yeah, uh, uh, not that just many. be contrarians on the internet. And by the way, Nick, you need to send me a clip that's someone going challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. <laughs> But trust me, there are some people that will have the most outlandish stuff just so they can be the, on the opposite side of an argument with you. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. I, I I know all too well about that. What always what amazes me about media is yeah. like you have stuff where it's like, oh, this sucks. And then after a while, I'll be like, oh, wait. Um, like, oh, wait. It, it, like, like, like uh, oh, wait, this is actually good. Or like, for example... Um, or you have stuff where, like, you know, Beloved, and they'll say, oh, this game was never good. Like, for example, uh, with the Resident Evil 4 remake, there's people out there saying, oh, the original Resident Evil 4 was never good. Bitch, please, shut the fuck up! They That's put why that they had to make a deal. remake, Nick. That's why they had to do a remake. Uh, a remake to, to improve To it. be fair, I hear the remake is actually pretty good. So, to be fair, it's actually a pretty well-done remake. So, like... I'll, I'll give that a pass, but the, like to say the Resident Evil Four, like I'm sorry, but like Resident Evil Four is literally the blueprint for almost all modern games. Like Dead Space would not exist without Resident Evil Four. Crap. That is crap. Mega crap. Oh, now we're gonna have words because I, I adamantly. No, love I, I Dead love Space. Dead Space. I love De- 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 Dead Space. No, love no, one, I'm not that. saying Resident Evil Four is better than Dead Space. I'm saying Resident Evil walked. <laughs> So Dead Space could run like it's it's one of those like yeah. it, it you know it, it like because if you look at Dead Space and Resident Evil Four it's uh, it's very clear that that Dead Space is is taking what Resident Evil Four did and then taking it to a whole other level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm being very careful with my words here. Well, no, see, here's the thing for me, and this actually goes back to the the game preservation thing. You know, there's a lot of people you see this online. You know, oh, it, it's just a movie, it's just a book, it's just a game, and it's like. No, these aren't. It's these not just game... whatever, it's culture. Okay, they're talking yeah. about fictional characters. Fictional characters. Did you specifically upload that to this 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 segment? Of, of yeah, the... because what I did is I picked a bunch of <laughs> your favorites from my show, uploaded that, and then I uploaded your list. But as I was saying... In my defense, it's appropriate! <laughs> Yeah, well, thing, it's not the characters that are important; it's the memories of them. There are people who are gone, and this is personal. This is my personal thing. There are people that are no longer here on this planet. Yes, but I have memories of them with these TV shows and these wo- movies and these games, and that's why preservation is actually extremely important. And it's, it's not a joke. It's not a meme. You know, buy the physical content. Buy no. This is stuff that needs to be preserved because it is a part of being human. It's a part of who we ourselves are. So I don't know if you guys ever heard the story, but there was this kid who used to play uh, like a racing game with his dad on his Xbox. And um, basically, like the time trial, there'd be like a goat, a ghost cow, ghost racer that you'd race. And so his dad passed away. But his 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 ghost save data would still exist. So basically, this this kid could actually go and race his dad whenever he wanted to and it, because the thing right. is if he beat if he beat the ghost it would be it would be it would, he would never actually win the race because then it would be deleted mm-hmm. so um he's since been I able to back that. up that save so his so that is literally a digital memory of his dad that is preserved that he can go back to anytime he wants and he can race his dad i'm sorry but like that is something that needs to be preserved this is the way this is the way. If it were, this is the way. If it weren't for the preservation people, his like his memory of his dad would eventually be destroyed. But because of, of people who help him back up that save data, he now has his dad literally with him forever. I'm sorry, but that is important. I agree. I have a funny right. uh, Dead Space story, actually, mm-hmm. real quick. If I can just throw this out. Yeah, sure. Go yeah. Ahead. Um. So. I played Dead Space, but my my mother and my little brother, Sean, would watch me play. (laughs) And we didn't know what these things were called. They're necromorphs. But we would give them 
names. We'd give different names to the different creatures and stuff. And the big Uber one, the one that you couldn't actually kill, we called him Achilles, you know, the Invincible Warrior. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I was playing and I was kind of feeling sick that day. So I had to run to the bathroom. And I told Sean, you know, yeah, you can hold the control. You can you can look around. You can dick around a little bit. You know, it's not a problem. And I'm in the bathroom and I hear Sean scream bloody murder. And I'm like, did someone break into the house? What the hell's going on? Sean, what's wrong? It's Achilles! It's Achilles! He's here! <laughs> and he's mad! <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez! Through the door, Sean, just run from him. You can't fight him. But, I can't run. The doors are all locked. <laughs> I'm just in horror in the bathroom. Like, it's impossible. <laughs> I have a memory. This, this, this just sounds like a sitcom bit. It is. I have a speak of sitcoms. Here's something that's definitely sitcom. I was playing Halo Two co-op with a buddy of mine. And we're playing one of the missions, and we take down two, like, enemy snipers. It's very, cl- it's very key that we say, say they're snipers. So he goes, hey, Jared, uh, who, who do we just kill? And then, and then I go, oh, yeah, it's, it's just two enemy snipers. And then he goes, sniping sucks. Then one of the Marines hops on the radio and goes, I heard that, you jackass. <laughs> it was timed so well. That was so un- – because normally what happens – what happens is the way that the dialogue is supposed to go is you drive up to like a cliff overlooking some water and then a marine your vehicle will go, oh man, I should get a postcard. Dear Sarge, kicking ass in outer space. Wish you were here. And then the dude comes in and says, I heard that you jackass, but we talked over them. The conversation stopped at that right moment. And then we were laughing for like the next, the rest of the mission going, I can't believe we timed that so well. I just wish he could have clipped that because, like, that would have been such a great YouTube clip. Yeah, I, I, know, uh, I know. Sergeant Johnson insults my friends. But um, I will Sergeant say that... Johnson being a dick to my friends. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. But I will say. Ow. Uh, Jay, he, uh, your voice, yeah, your uh, on, voice. Uh, the audio cut out. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But as I was saying, preservation is important because we all know how streaming and PS5 and all that's convenient. But sometimes you're not able to play that content. The server shuts down. Or sometimes with, with streaming TV shows, one of your best episodes is essentially a banned episode due to censorship. So it's better to have a physical copy so you can enjoy the full show as much as you want. And share that memory long term instead of relying and paying 10 bucks for a streaming service. But that's all I'm going to say on that. Like, for example, uh, you know, um, if HBO Max ever takes the Snyder Cut off of, a, uh, off of, the, off of their service. Uh, yep, Jared, he got my, he got what he got prompt. He got it. <laughs> Fuck it, HBO Max. <laughs> Suck it. I, I, and, I, I, and finally, Nick, I got this for that exact goddamn reason. <laughs> Oh, I, I love that I didn't even need to tell him to go grab Literally, as soon as I lo- as soon as I pressed order, this is what was going through my mind. Yeah, suck at Warner Brothers. <laughs> you literally brought that into this one. <laughs> it's useful. <laughs> no, like, I was I like, you know what? I... You know what? Screw you, Hamada. Because <laughs> uh, in my defense, that's, that's Warner funny. Brothers has been known to do some really screwy stuff when it comes to Zack Snyder. Oh, like I, uh, I, I like, do like, have oh. to ask though, uh, uh, JH, what streaming service do you have that's only ten dollars? Yeah, that's, that's a good question though. I mean, Disney Plus is still about ten dollars with no ads. Isn't it going up though? Didn't it? It didn't did go up because it was. Remember, it was eight dollars when it first came out. Now it's ten dollars. Uh, it has like a seven dollar, I think, with ads options. Uh, but you know, no one actually picks those. And Disney is so desperate right now; they're cramming remakes left and right. Yeah, uh, we'll see if that. It, it's a, you know what we need is a clip from Dodgeball. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it works out for them. That's why yeah, you have that clip. No, I don't have that. You don't have yeah. that clip. I don't. Eighty plus clips you said you had for reaction. Nick didn't you send don't. it to me. So really, it's Nick's fault. It's not my fault. I have failed you. I'm sorry. You have failed this podcast. But hey, you're, you're, you're lucky the key you rat, have you're the key rat, rat to distract you. 
cute rat. You're lucky you have a cute rat. You're lucky you do. You didn't see that coming? Thing is, Courage knows he's cute, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so anyway, just... uh, <laughs> Vagrancy, just... where can we find you? Yeah. Um, you can find me on YouTube at The Vagrancy Horror. Um, also on Twitter at The Vagrancy V, I believe is my. Because I lost my original account. I was a. I was a little bit naughty, and I said something you shouldn't say on Twitter, apparently. So, yeah, Vagrancy V at Twitter and um, you, the Vagrancy Horror on YouTube. Uh, did you say that everyone has a right to their opinion, you naughty boy? I jokingly called somebody a C-U-N-T. Wait, were they a Karen? <laughs> what? Were they British? Were they British? Yes! Yes, it was a British. <laughs> okay, that that's kind of like uh, uh, like okay, that's actually kind of bullshit because in Britain it takes on a whole other context. Have you seen yes. those people call each other that, uh, that as a term of endearment? All right, everyone, chill, chill, chill. <laughs> yeah, and and so they took away my original one, so I had to remake my uh, Twitter account. I was like, "Vagrancy V." <laughs> I am reborn. <laughs> you can't stop me. You can't kill me. There's okay, a slip in there on. somewhere. <laughs> that sign can't stop me because I can't read. <laughs> if you watched my channel, you'd realize I can't write either. <laughs> and I say that only because my, my crew isn't here. They would probably guillotine me if I said that out loud. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, technically, you just said that out loud for the, all the internet to hear. I know. I know. But now I have a chance to get a head start, so... <laughs> But, uh, yes, so, Nick, you want to wrap us up? Yes. So, uh, Jay Heat, Vagrancy Horror, and Jared, thank you for uh, stopping by. And so, this has been Nick from the Phoenix Press. Remember, I can only show you the door. You're the ones to walk through it.